You're listening to the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. Your escape to reality. Gotcha. <laughs> Got it. We have to keep an eye on on the, these guys, the, the intelligent design fools, because they're not they're not going away. Let's move on to your emails and questions. The first email comes from Darren Ohashi. Didn't give his location, and he writes. Uh, recently, the infidel guy had an interview with Dr. Fred A. Bowman uh, about what Dr. Bowman calls the fraud of ADHD. That's attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. He claims that there is no disease behind ADHD and that the medications should not be prescribed for what are basically normal behaviors. His basic argument is that ADHD has no physiological manifestation. That is, you can't determine if someone has ADHD only by looking at their physiology, and thus it is not a quote-unquote disease or even a disorder, which he claims is an equivalent term. Dr. Bowman definitely sounds like he has a problem with psychiatry, but if he's right, that might be justified. So he basically wants to know what we think about uh, Dr. Bowman's attitude towards ADHD and, and, in fact, other psychiatric illnesses as well. Uh, this is you know, a very interesting topic. Um, basically, Been around a long time, too, this debate. Yeah, it, it has. It has. Uh, there, there, this is... You know, and I've written about it before. You know, I, I believe that that Dr. Bowman's attitude really is is most fairly characterized as mental illness denial or psychiatry denial. I really don't think that his arguments are legitimate. Uh, by the way, I, I want to do a little bit of background check because half the time when you when you're talking with somebody who is sort of this dedicated against the notion of mental illness, half the time they're Scientologists. Uh, now, from what I found out, Dr. Bowman is not a Scientologist. However, he has um, consulted for front groups of the Church of Scientology, specifically the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, uh, and he has received awards from the Church of Scientology. Citizens but it, that doesn't mean that he's, but he's not a Scientologist, and that you know that, that could have been innocent on his part. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's in league with them, and doesn't it doesn't say anything in and of itself about his arguments. It's, that was just Steve. Would just you accept background. an award? Would, would you accept an award from Scientologists if you were offered? No, one? of course not. I, mean, I think it, you should be hey. more careful. That's kind of like if you're an evolutionary biologist and you have some fringe ideas about evolution. I wouldn't go accepting awards from the Discovery Institute. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. yeah. that, that's kind Kind of what he was doing, but anyway, that that's not the point. The point is the arguments that he makes, and I've and, and he's I've, saying he's saying that there's no such thing at all. He's not saying that yes. it's just overprescribed. Right? Or, he's saying it doesn't okay. exist. Every one of his arguments are totally fallacious, uh, and I've been I've discussed this issue with psychologists, with you know dozens of people. I've been in email conversations with them far longer than I really should have been, but I, you know, I really was trying to get down to the bottom of what they think and to see if I could put them into that sort of logical corner. And you, you know what? They argue like creationists. They really do. Uh, even worse sometimes. I mean, it really is incredible. What, what they do, the typical thing where they, you try to focus on one point and, and then when you show them logically that the point is not legitimate, they defend it by making another point. They basically lateral over to another point. And then if you address that point, they just lateral over again, just like creationists do. And they never quite really give you closure on, on the point that you were trying to make. And I've read some interviews with Dr. Bowman. You know, so I, I, uh, he does make the standard arguments. The one, one argument is that um, ADHD is diagnosed by checking a list of symptoms. Um, there's uh, 16 different symptoms of, of ADHD, and if through you know just observation a child is is shown to have eight of them, that qualifies, or nine of them that qualifies them for the diagnosis. In other words, saying the diagnosis is made clinically by observing symptoms. There is no way to make the diagnosis by doing any kind of physiological, anatomical, biological test. Kind of uh, like a head, kind of like a headache. Right, right. So th- that's that. And he's he's a, a neurologist. Dr. Bowman's a child neurologist. So you know, I, I, it's really incredible that that a practicing physician can make that argument because there are so many diseases and disorders. By the way, those are not the same thing that um, that we diagnose that way. I think the closest analogy is migraine headache. Migraine headache is diagnosed by checking off a number of symptoms. You have a certain number of symptoms of migraine, it's a migraine. There, it, if the MRI scan of your brain, EEG, you know, if I sliced up your brain on, a, on, a, on the autopsy table, nothing would tell me that you have migraine. There's absolutely no way to see it with any kind of physiological test. 
Um, so therefore, if you use that argument against the existence of ADHD, then you also have to apply it to a lot of other non-controversial, more mundane things like migraines. And, you know, it is so clear that, that migraine exists as a clinical syndrome. I mean, the obs- it is, uh, you know, people have a very consistent constellation of, of signs and symptoms. The problem here is that there, the, the mental illness deniers are looking at the brain as if it were the liver. And they're trying to tell me, they're trying to say, you know, show me the abnormal cells. You know, show me the, the, the standard kinds of things that we use to diagnose a disease. The problem is, is that the brain has something that no other organ in the body has. Uh, the brain's function is also dependent upon the pattern of neuronal connections that are made in the brain and the uh, robustness of connections and the activity of neurotransmitters, the density of receptors, and, and the physiology of those receptors. Those are things that we cannot image. And yet, you know, if the difference between somebody who is a brilliant at math and somebody who has absolutely no aptitude at math is in how their brain's wired up in that fashion. And, there's no, and it can't be visualized. There's absolutely no way to visualize it. But that's like saying there's no meaningful difference between math aptitude between different people or, or, different, or, or musical aptitude. Of course there is. Now, with a, what ADHD is... Uh, ADHD is that uh, it's a disorder of the uh, the frontal lobes, and the uh, and uh, the specific function that is that is disordered is called executive function. This is what gives us the ability to uh, make plans and judgments about our actions, and so to basically look at the big picture of what we do, and and the consequences of what we do, um, and make. You know, good judgments for our life. It also gives us the ability to sort of focus our attention on a task for a prolonged period of time, and it varies just like all you know mental functions vary. And some people just have really bad executive function. Now, at some point, it becomes so bad that it actually starts to have negative detriments. You know, detriments for your life. You have you know you don't do as well in school. You have a hard time holding down a job. A higher divorce rate. Higher you know rate of a use of illicit drugs, higher rate of uh, being arrested and winding up in jail. I mean, there's actually, you know, very well documented real consequences to this. And at some, I think at some point it's reasonable to say, all right, these people have, are at the low end of, of the spectrum in terms of their executive function, and it's causing, you know, these problems for their life. It's reasonable to call that a disorder. That's what ADHD is. ADHD is. Um, now, of course, there's, there's no a- analogy with any other organ system in the body because no other organ system functions like the brain. No other organ system is dependent upon that. So you know, all of the criticisms of it, the fact that it's diagnosed the way it is, that you know, there aren't diseased cells or whatever, is completely irrelevant. It's all completely irrelevant. The other thing that, you know, that uh, the mental illness and ADHD deniers do is they – and I've had some people that I've argued with for a long time who wouldn't even grant – the notion that you can assign, you know, terms like healthy or unhealthy to behaviors. They're basically saying that, you know, thoughts and behaviors cannot be a disease. That's their mantra. You know, thoughts can't be a disease, which is, again, kind of a non sequitur. The fact is, thoughts, behaviors, and moods are created by the functioning of our brain and the, and the you know, the hardwiring and biochemical function of our brain can be dysfunctional. Um, I had one guy I was arguing with who wouldn't even allow the term dysfunctional. You know, it's like you can't, like all function, everything's normal. Everything people do is normal. All, all function is function. It's all part of the human condition. And we can't assign any kind of, you know, healthy or unhealthy judgments on it. And that's, you know, that's just nonsense. I mean, it just flies in the face of logic. You know, the organs were designed to function within certain parameters. If you're far enough out of those parameters, you know, and then it leads to problems, that's something that's reasonable to intervene on it. I try to get out of the semantic argument and just say, just from a practical point of view, if this isn't working and it's causing problems and I can make it work better and make those, and make those problems much less for you, what's the problem with that? I mean, that, that's, a perfect, that's the, basically the approach with ADHD. Now, very quickly, just to give, you know, give you the world, whirlwind tour of the, the scientific evidence for ADHD, it's pretty clearly a genetic disorder. It's, it's clearly a brain disorder. There's lots of evidence that shows that the, 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 uh, the, the parts of the brain that you think should be hypofunctioning are hypofunctioning. 
uh, on fMRI and EEG studies. You know, these are like real physiological studies. Of course, when you bring up those kinds of studies, they say, yes, but you can't use them to make a clinical diagnosis. They're not reliable enough to make a clinical diagnosis. And that is moving the goalpost. Because they're saying there's no physiological evidence. You give them physiological evidence that the brain's not functioning well in that part of the brain. And they go, yes, but it doesn't meet this other criteria that I just arbitrarily made up. Say, well, it's not reliable enough to make a clinical diagnosis. Well, yeah, that same is true of migraines. You know, we could look at migraineurs' heads. And, yeah, you know, they don't behave quite the same as people who don't have a migraine. If you look at, you know, certain... um, uh, reflexes in certain neurotransmitter activity, but you can't, it's not really useful clinically as a diagnosis. It's only really in the realm of research at this point in time. Same exact thing, but so they 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 pull the old moving the goalpost uh, logical fallacy too, and it goes much deeper. I mean, there's a lot of depth to to this denial, but it really it has all of the earmarks of pseudoscientific denial. They use all the same logical fallacies. The core is though that they're just they're not applying appropriate criteria. To uh, to thinking about uh, brain function basically so Oof, very that, that was it's tough <laughs> that was brutal it, it's very <laughs> frustrating to talk to these people it really is I mean I've argued with creationists I've argued with uh, with mental illness deniers and if anything they're worse than they're worse than creationists in my opinion, my personal experience debating them I have a little anecdote that our audience.